Hello and welcome to an episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today we are taking a look at the brand new Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure from Mattel Toys. For those of you who are unaware, the Hammond Collection is a line of figures aimed at specifically collectors within the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park line of figures from Mattel. And naturally, this being the original Jurassic Park T-Rex, this is a very highly anticipated figure, and I just had to get one for my collection. For a little context, I am of course primarily a collector of Godzilla figures, however, I have had a side project collecting wise where for a long time I've had an eye out for any and all really accurate figures of the original Jurassic Park T-Rex, be they officially licensed or third party figures or whatnot. Part of the reason is I'm a huge fan of the original Jurassic Park film. Of course being a child of the 90s I owe this film so much because if it weren't for Jurassic Park I doubt I would have been as passionate a dinosaur fan as I was growing up as a little kid in the 90s and early 2000s and of course I probably would not be nearly as big a Godzilla fan if, if at all as I am now so the original film especially this T-Rex means a lot to me and when I found out that this thing existed I just had to pick it up. And there's actually kind of an interesting story behind this, which I did go over in my previous unboxing video, because it is a total fluke that I actually got this figure in hand, and in hand as early as I did. My previous unboxing video was actually, as far as I'm aware, the first unboxing or review of this guy, or gal I should say, it is a she, this T-Rex, but it was the first one that actually appeared on YouTube, as far as I'm aware. I filmed that like a week ago if not less and now there's already a bunch more since then but I was really really lucky to get it up so early and the reason for that is I watched Jurassic Park Dominion recently I think I need to watch it a second time because I, I, I'm not really sure my thoughts on that film are fully cemented yet so I might do a, f a full review of that movie on this channel if you guys are interested but I do need to watch it again. But regardless, I watched it the first time and I was just in a very Jurassic Park mood after that film. In particular, really loving the hype for Rexy because, you know, she's my gal, you know? And for a long time, I've been going to Kmart here in Australia because they sell Playmates Godzilla figures there. So every time I'd go to Kmart, I'd see if they have any new Playmates figures and across the shelves, they'd always have the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park figures, which I'd occasionally glance over at them and be really, really tempted to pick up one of their T-Rex figures. I always tried to restrain myself because they are very, very toy-like and I don't really have much space and I do want to focus my money, time and attention and of course shelf space more on Godzilla figures. I went there last time, I couldn't resist, and I picked up one of the thrash and throw, or whatever it's called, figures. I'm actually going to bring it in real quick. I ended up buying one of these guys, and naturally, I decided to take a look at some other people's thoughts on the figures and reviews, and that's when I found out, as a complete fluke, that this really high-end T-Rex is being released just at that time and I found it online from a store called Big W and you, you could only get it online as far as I'm aware at the time and I bought it on the spot and it turns out that was like the first place it was released as far as I'm aware at least here in Australia and I managed to get the first review in or unboxing video rather so that's kind of the backstory of all of that all that aside, let's actually talk about the figure itself. So, you got the box here, which I showed off in my initial unboxing, if you want to see it in more detail. But on the side here, we've got a cool, cool image of the T-Rex here, and the actual Jurassic Park logo, as opposed to the Jurassic World logo, which is always great to see. Love seeing that. A cool look at the promo images of the T-Rex here. So a little shot from the movie. Flip it around. Big Hammond Collection logo. Really nice. And doesn't she just look great? Now, on the surface, this does appear to be very similar to your typical 
Jurassic Park and or Jurassic World style T-Rex figure from Mattel. However, there are a number of key differences which elevate this figure among the rest. First and foremost, as you can see, the paintwork on this thing is much better. There's a lot more attention to detail. Stuff is painted on this thing that normally would not be painted on your typical Mattel T-Rex figure. The nails are actually painted on, on the hands here. The dew claws on the feet, they're painted in. They're almost never painted in on the toy line from what I've seen. And you actually have shading on this figure that goes all the way, say like on the underbelly here, all the way down her belly to the tip of her tail, which is something that a lot of Mattel figures skip out on. They usually have the shading just on the underbelly or just on the bottom jaw. They always seem to miss out on little bits here and there, but this thing has had a lot of attention to detail done on it. There's a lot of airbrushing everywhere and it's fairly consistent with what we expect to see on a Jurassic Park T-Rex from the original film. It's not quite perfect, but for a figure of this style, it works really well. I do really like the stripes on the back and some of the darker shading on the legs here. I think that looks really nice. It actually gives it that kind of a burnt steak sort of look, which I think might be a little too dark on this figure, in particular some of these areas up here, but I prefer that to be there rather than it, than it being too plain. I think it does look really nice. I do have some nitpicks of this figure paint-wise, mostly in terms of the head. One of the main ones is this dark section that lines the front of her snout here, just above the teeth. Now, if you do look at images of this T-Rex, she does have a little bit of a darker patch there, but it's pretty much because the individual scoots just above her teeth are painted slightly darker. But overall, it's not quite this dark and it's not quite this apparent. It does look like she's kind of dipped her, her snout into some dark paint or something like that. As a lot of people have called it the chocolate milk moustache effect. I do like that there is paint variation, but I just think they went a little bit overboard with that. So I'm, I'm not too happy with that. The next thing, if we go up a little bit, you can see she's got a little nose holes there and unfortunately they're not painted in. They're the same flat brown paints that the majority of her body is painted in and I really wish they would have gone in and just highlighted them with a little bit of black paint in there, which I think is actually even present on the original Stan Winston animatronic that they used in the original film. Now, I've seen stills of it and I have noticed there is a little bit more dark paint inside the nose. So that's something which I wish they added in. Another thing which I'm not super sold on is this dry brushing that they have over these scoots here. The first thing that bothers me is I'm not sure it's necessarily accurate. I do like that there is some highlights to the face because that's always good. More paint variation is always welcome, but I feel like it looks a little rough here. The rest of the paint is done really smoothly and you can see that it's been airbrushed on. It's really clean looking, whereas these, they kind of look gloopy and, and rough in comparison. It's not a big deal, but it's something that I'm not too happy with. And especially this highlight right here kind of bothers me because I don't really see that as being too present on images of the Rex in the film. And another thing which I wish wasn't overly as accentuated on this is some of the other dark patches on the face. When I look at images of this T-Rex from the movie, really the only dark patches on the face that I notice are actually in the area around the eyes, which right now don't look too bad because I've got quite a bright light going this way, kind of giving a little bit of a shadow back here, but in other lighting, they don't seem as nearly as pronounced as they could be. So I would like a little bit more darkness in that region there. Despite my nitpicks, I think the paintwork is miles ahead of your typical Mattel Jurassic Park T-Rex figure, and it is really, really nice on this thing. It does capture that, like, what I called a burnt steak sort of look earlier, but what is more accurately characterized is like a unripe banana sort of look, this T-Rex's skin. A while back, I actually had a bootleg version of the Horizon model kit, which is actually based on an original 
uh, Stan Winston maquette that they used for the film. And I had a bootleg version of that model kit of this T-Rex. And when I was researching the paintwork, something that stood out to me was they actually said that the paintwork and the coloration of the original Rex was based on a kind of brown splotchiness that you get on banana skin when it's unripe and bruised. And I think they capture that really nicely with this figure here. It's got a good, good amount of vibrant browns to it, and it's really eye-catching and very accurate, though I do have my nitpicks, but it is very accurate regardless to the film. So I am really happy with that. So seeing as we do have a good shot of this figure's head in focus, now's a really good time to talk about the sculpt work of this figure. Especially since this is in the Hammond collection, and since Mattel have actually had a pretty good reputation as far as sculpt work goes with this line of figures, it's no surprise that this particular Rex has an excellent, very sharply done sculpt. One thing I've noticed from looking closely at the figure itself is I think, just like probably all the other Mattel figures, the sculpt was actually done digitally and then 3D printed. So unlike this being an old school style figure where they would actually hand sculpt the figure and do castings of it that way, I think this is a digital sculpt of a figure. And the way I kind of can tell that is when you look front on, so I might have to move her back a little bit to get her centered, and you get just a really good sense of this figure from the very, very front. You see, this figure is identical on either side, so it has been copied over on the other side, which is a really good way to tell that something has been 3D sculpted, because a lot of 3D sculpting software works this way, where you only really need to sculpt one side and it automatically fills out the other side with the exact same detail work. And if you look on the scaling, the really macro scaling stuff, you see patterns begin to emerge on either side. And that's just a really common tell that figures have been sculpted digitally. Regardless, I don't have a preference for a figure being sculpted digitally or otherwise, but it's just a fun little thing to note. As far as detail work, just like pretty much all the other Rexes that Mattel have put out, there's a lot of detail. You can see all the individual little scales here, they're fairly sharply done. There's a lot of detail work in the skin, and I particularly love this area of skin on the body here. I actually think it's a little over-detailed, if I'm going to be entirely honest. That's done really well. If we take a good look at her face, though, you can see all the little tiny scoots. It's all very, very nicely done. And especially with the paintwork we've got on here, it's brought out really, really well. Now, one thing that I do have an issue with on this figure is the teeth. Now, the teeth, I think, are slightly better done on this figure than they are on some of their other Rexes, where some of the teeth are almost molded together. This one has less of that, although at the very base, some of them are a little close together. But my general problem with the teeth is they're obviously just too blunt. They're, they're still very toy-like, which is probably one of the most striking things about this figure, which knock it down for me. When you see it from a distance, these teeth are one of the things that are the most off-looking about the figure, I'd say. Regardless, they are done fairly well for a Mattel Rex. They're some of the best T-Rex teeth on a Mattel Rex that I think we have at the moment. But they are, yeah, again, just the most toy-like looking thing. Although I do like the, the paintwork on them. They're done in a nice off-white sort of bone color. And now we actually get a good look at the inside of her mouth here, which is... One of the more interesting parts of the figure, not only because we can get a nice wide roar from her, and she has a nice articulated tongue, very cool, but look at these, these flaps here. These are done in some sort of rubber material. I think it's probably a type of silicon or something, and that's really cool. Look at that. Really sweet. Now... I don't know exactly how I feel about these because my worry is over time, and I mean like over decades, I don't mean like in the next year or so, but I, I do mean over time, stuff like this is likely to degrade faster than the hard plastic this figure is made of. Now I've heard a criticism of some of the Mattel Rexes is that 
They're generally made of this sort of harder plastic, which tends to be brittle when played with by children, which is a very fair point. But when it comes to a figure like this, which is in the collector's range, of course the Hammond collection, that's not really a big issue. We're not expecting these figures to be played with, and at least of all bashed into other things. We're not expecting them to be roughed up in that way. But stuff like this will naturally degrade, as far as I'm aware. Most rubber materials do tend to kind of stiffen up and crumble over, over time. But you know what? I'm not exactly familiar with what this particular rubber is or how it will last, so that's just my speculation. I could be proven entirely wrong and this could last for many years to come, but as it is new, it is really cool. It is a cool feature to have this sort of rubbery material used on the mouth, and it does look really nice. When you're opening up the jaw, it looks nice and natural, and it stretches, and it moves, and it's really cool. You can see it's not really painted, it's just cast in this sort of pink silicon rubber material. It's got some nice detail work in it though, at least on this side. I think on the inside, I can't really see. It's probably got a bit of detail in there, but less than the outside. But it looks good. Same with the tongue, this is also some sort of firm, rubbery material. And it looks really great. The inside of our mouth is nice and shiny and looks very wet. So that is a good addition. It's got this beige coloring for the tongue and this more sort of slight burgundy pink color for the bottom of her jaw there. Looking really good. Now, a part of this figure that you guys would have definitely noticed by now that's really striking is the eyes. The eyes on this Rex are done in a clear yellow plastic. They have a backing with the actual pupil drawn on or painted on or however they're done. But they have a backing that's a little bit further behind the eye and you get this really cool illusion of depth in the eye and the pupil actually moving and kind of following you around the room when you move the figure. That's Probably one of the coolest things about this figure, especially if you get it at a good angle. The eyes look beautiful on this thing. I do have a minor gripe with it though, which is that though they look great and I love the illusion of the eyes moving, more or less most of the time the eyes look blank. Because I feel like they had the pupils painted on a little bit too far back. Whatever, whatever has the pupil drawn onto it is a little bit too deep inside the skull here and you kind of lose the pupil from a lot of angles and you just have these sort of faded out yellow eyes which is cool in and of itself but I would have preferred if they just had the pupil a little bit more closer to the actual surface and that way you would have more or less the same effect but you would have seen her pupils from more angles and I think that would look more realistic as well. It's hard to get the exact angle where you can see it but in person you can tell that her iris is actually an almond shaped slit rather than a round pupil so she appears to have more cat like eyes than the very, very noticeably round pupil she had in the film. In a lot of iconic shots you can tell that her iris should be completely round. It's not very apparent because they're not like super long, but she does have slightly more cat-like eyes than the actual creature in the film. So that's a very minor nitpick. Again, I, I really do love the eyes on this thing and they're a very welcome addition. Since I am reviewing her, I thought I should actually point out where there are some discrepancies between what we see in the film and what we see on the figure. Especially when it's something that could be so simply changed without really any extra work being put into the figure if they had actually gone in and done that from the first place. Here we can get a nice good look at the inside of her mouth and those sort of rubbery slits up close. Very cool. Since we're nicely zoomed in I'm just gonna take this opportunity to give you a real good once over across this figure. Look at that. That's just a great looking angle of her face there. Actually looks pretty faithful to the film in this angle, especially her eye and everything. Really, really nice. 
and we can just follow her body along taking a good look at all the different scale work across the figure it is a little more muddied the the individual scales across her body but those wrinkles are very very nicely done they're quite deep fairly crisp and look really great again i really love this area i think it's even more wrinkled than it is in the film like i already said but it just looks really nice on this figure very deep rough texture across her legs here really cool you can see all that muscular detail there's her feet i'm gonna get back to them but um this is another area where i think they could have done better on this figure but i'll get back to that in a sec let's let's just continue looking at the detail work you can see her underbelly here detail wise the sculpt is a little bit more muddy on the underbelly the paint is also kind of basic. It's just a flat beige color, which is it could be done better. In the film, she had sort of individual splotches of darker scales, and I feel like a little bit more highlight work could have worked really well in this area. But regardless, uh, they actually did put in the faithful detail work of the more sort of bigger, flatter scales that she has on her belly here which is accurate to the Jurassic Park film. That's actually a really telling feature of whether any third party or generic T-Rex figures are actually trying to base their designs off of the Jurassic Park design. She has a very definitive and very distinctive texture on her belly made of these larger flat carapace-like scales. Here we see the bottoms of her feet, which I'm also not super happy with. I feel like they could have done this texture better. It looks like sort of generic rough detailing, whereas they could have gone in and actually sculpted in the individual pads of her feet. But we'll, again, we'll get to her feet a bit later on in the video. More of that nice detailing under her tail. And there, uh, it just continues all the way the very tip of her tail, which is actually done in a bendy wire rubber for anyone who's interested. Now, I don't like to mess with bendy wire rubber tails too much because, again, just like I was talking about with the flaps in the mouth, these do tend to deteriorate over time. And with some of the skinnier ones, the more fragile ones, they do tend to have the wire pop out and break over time. So I really like to leave these alone. But that is an option if you guys are interested with this figure. It does have a bendy wire tail, which starts at this seam line about here, and the rest is to this hard plastic, except for actually this ring on her neck. This is actually also a more firm rubber material. It's probably the same material her tongue is made of, which is a fairly firm rubber as well. Now that the whole figure is in frame, we can appreciate not just how much detail work is put into this thing across all the skin, all the little bits of plastic, it's all very well detailed, but we can appreciate how well proportioned this Rex is. Out of Mattel's entire Jurassic Park, Jurassic World line, I think this is their best and most well proportioned T-Rex figure. We've got a nice big tail, a fairly chunky body. I think. Sometimes I've looked at this Rex and thought perhaps the body could be a bit bigger, but I think it's actually on point. And a good, strong neck on her and a very well-proportioned head with very well-proportioned details all around. But I do have my one big gripe with this figure, which I think all of you know what it is at this point. The feet. The feet on this Rex are way too big. These are not in scale at all, and I get it. I know why they did it. This figure has a lot of articulation in it, especially in the legs, and you want this thing to be able to stand on its own, and T-Rex figures are generally very top-heavy, and I understand that. Not only that, but Mattel is quite well known for having very stylized very big feet on their dinosaur figures. It kind of makes sense that they do have them here. However, it just pains me because when I cover the feet up, what I'm left with here is what looks like a very high-end, very screen-accurate version 
of the Jurassic Park T-Rex, which is something that we have been dying for as a fan base for such a long time. We only really get super expensive figures to cover a basis for a really accurate original Jurassic Park T-Rex. However, under here, from this point down, we just have these very cartoonish looking feet which I think ruin the proportions of this entire figure. There's something about them being present that makes the entire thing go out of whack for me. I feel like it makes the body look too small, the legs look a bit too long, the head maybe a touch too big, the tail too small. I don't know. Something about it just throws this whole thing out of whack. And especially if you compare it to other figures that are very accurately proportioned, you'll see just how big they are. Even if you bring in other Mattel Jurassic Park T-Rex figures, these still seem even bigger in proportion to this figure than those do on their other T-Rex figures. It's especially upsetting to me because there are classic shots in Jurassic Park, the film, where you have the T-Rex stepping down and you see its feet very clearly as like the striking image of the T-Rex as they build up to reveal the full thing. So I have a really good sense of what the feet should look like, not just the proportions but the actual sculpt. And the shape of these seems fairly inaccurate to me too, it's like the toes are way too long. The heel is sort of way too prominent here, and they just feel like they don't spread out in quite the right way. It's not to mention the claws here. I do like how, how they're painted. They have the nice brown airbrushing here, the, the darker spot up there, and the claws are done in this nice sort of charcoal color. But they're sculpted to be quite blunt, which is a bit of a shame as well. And they just don't really feel like they're bearing the weight of this figure as much as I would like either. Overall, the feet are the weakest part of the figure in my opinion. And they really are the point where I feel like if they had changed those, this would, would have been a perfect figure for me. I do have my gripes with it still. I feel like even accuracy-wise, I have some subtle little issues with the, the sculpt here and there, with maybe the face. Again, I've pointed out my issues with the paintwork. All of that aside, if the feet were done to a better standard, a more movie-accurate standard, I, I could have overlooked all of those and said that this is pretty much a perfect figure, but the, the, mm, I don't know. I don't know, guys. My solution, which I would have vastly preferred, is if they at least made them a little bit smaller. If they could have reduced the feet down just a bit to maybe make them about this proportion, I would have preferred that. I think, I think if even they made them like a quarter or a third less the size than they are now, that would have had a big effect on how I see this figure. That honestly would have been my second preference, and the reason I brought it up first is that my main preference might come across as a bit more controversial amongst you guys, but you gotta understand, I've been searching for a perfect representation of this T-Rex for my collection for years, and I don't care if it affects the playability of the figure, I just want it to be as screen accurate as possible, so I would much rather have this figure be made with movie accurate feet scale wise. You can bulk them up a little bit at the bottom here and there just to really emphasize her weight on it. I mean this figure is going to be a little stylized regardless. But I just don't want the weird sort of clown chicken look that we get with this thing. It really just looks like a big plastic burnt chicken when it does have the feet like this. But what I would have done I would have had them movie accurate and I would have had them have little holes in the feet for pegs. A lot of Mattel's T-Rexes already have holes in their feet for the little pegs that stick in when you have them in the box because they attach them to the box. So I would have had something like that and I would have had this figure come with an optional base. And ideally I would still like to have this figure you know be weighed out in a way that for the most part its center of gravity helps it stand on the little feet because it is possible to do even with articulated figures like this because that way you could have had the best of both worlds you can have an optional stand to have it standing really well when you don't want to mess around with it but you could have the figure have a lot of playability still by being able to just simply take it off the stand 
mess with it, mess with the articulation, pose it, do whatever you need, and then just have that stand as an option for the figure. If you do want it to stand on your shelf for a long amount of time without worrying about it falling over, that's what I would have done. Because at this point, I still feel like I'm still on my search. I'm still on my search for the perfect Jurassic Park Rexy figure to be like the canonical figure in my collection of that classic dinosaur. But as it stands, because of that little issue, I feel like this one is not quite there. But that's just me. Again, I still love this thing regardless. The rest of the proportions on the figure are near flawless. I, I really love the look of this figure. So before I do actually bring in a few other comparison figures, I do want to go over the articulation for this figure because that is kind of important because it is the third main thing that makes this thing stand out from other Mattel T-Rex figures. So primarily, unlike a lot of Mattel figures, this one has leg articulation, which is great. Initially, these legs, especially this joint here, was really stiff and I was scared to move it but it does move pretty well once you get those joints working. Now this is sort of a normal joint. All the T-Rexes have joints here, but where this one shines, got double jointed knees here, and all these little bits are separate here, or separate joints. So you can really get a good range of movement out of these legs. So you can pretty much do whatever you want. You got a lot of ankle pivot here. Fortunately, no articulation in the toes. That would have kind of been cool but it's difficult to uh, add something like that. And I was really not expecting something like that from a figure like this. So that's completely fair. <laughs> but yeah, you can get this thing in all manner of poses because of the articulation. However, I will concede that I feel like this joint here of the foot, these tend to be quite loose. So I do find that sometimes I pose the figure and she will droop down, which I'm not very happy with because uh, it does limit you to the poses that you can have, and you oftentimes do have to kind of have her fairly neutrally posed with her feet. Standing very column-like half the time, either very column-like or very bent down in order for this joint to be at its sort of maximum point, which isn't ideal, but it's still a really cool feature that we do have this articulation here. Again, this might just be an issue of my figure. I don't know how it goes to the rest of the line. But I do often have issues with the articulation at this point in the ankle here. Regardless, you can get it to work pretty well most of the time. Get her in all sorts of different interesting poses. Like I brought up earlier, her tail does have that bendy wire segment. But we do also get two other segments in the tail. So... You do get a nice bit of wiggle room this way and this way and up and down because this is all in a ball joint, really sweet. This area is also in a ball joint, although it just jiggles a little bit. But regardless, any sort of articulation is very welcome. One of my favorite joints on this figure is this one here in the waist or around the rib section more accurately in the chest because you can get her pose up really high or looking down nice and low and a nice range of side to side movement which when you combine it with some of her neck movement you can get her in a good amount of poses now this segment here little rubber segment so in theory that should help with posing her and I think it kind of does it helps her head maneuver side to side but unfortunately this part here where it attaches to the body it really doesn't have all that much of a range of movement. It just basically jiggles ever so slightly. Another point which is really unique to this figure is we actually have articulated little T-Rex arms. You can move them this way and this way. I think they can probably spin 360 if you wanted them to. There you go. You can get a T-Rex doing a weird swimming motion. <laughs> and they have... A bend in the elbow here, which is very nice. It's got a fairly restricted amount of movement here, but she can spin this fully. And it's got a little hinge joint that goes up and down. But the sculpt is fairly restrictive. But you can get her in that nice sort of classic Jurassic Park T-Rex arm pose that we all know and love for arms sort of like that. 
really, really cool, really cute. And she has the same type of articulation for her hand here of the two claws, which is very iconic for T-Rex. You can move it up and down as well. And then we come to her face, her, her mouth, most specifically, which as you've seen, can open up. She's kind of got two open positions of her mouth. It clicks in, in, in two different poses. So we've got closed, which is of course your neutral pose. Then she can roar and it clicks in at this openness. Then it clicks in at like fully open like this. And it's kind of difficult to really do anything in between. You can kind of get it to stay, but for some reason they tend to be ratcheted, these joints, which I don't know how I feel about. I'd probably prefer if you could have like a fluid range of motion in her jaw and I also prefer if you could move the bottom jaw and the top jaw separately, but they seem to be interlocked, so they have to move together, which is really cool for getting her in this very big, wide roaring stance. But it's just something that I prefer articulation wise if they could have, you know, separate hinges there. Articulation wise, I really dig this thing. I think it definitely could be improved, and my, of course, my main issue is the stability of the legs. Not the stability of the feet, because she she has no problem standing in general. It's just the tightness of the joints, which I would improve on this thing. Let's compare the Hammond Collection Rexy to some other Jurassic Park T-Rex figures. Starting off with the Thrash and Devour T-Rex from Mattel. This is a really apt comparison because timing wise, these are the two Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World T-Rexes that are currently available on the market from Mattel. This one being aimed at the children's toys side of things, whereas this one is aimed at collectors. However, I will say I actually really love both figures for different reasons though. This one, like I brought up, is superior paint-wise, and the sculpt and detail work and everything is fantastic, excluding the feet. <laughs> Whereas this one here... <laughs> it gets kind of annoying with the electronic roaring gimmick, I will say. Every time I bump it, it tends to roar and make sounds. But I will say, I do actually love the sculpt of this thing as it is. And one thing I do prefer on this figure is actually the feet. I don't know why, but despite this thing actually being about the same size, I'm not entirely sure what the scale is that these figures go in. I, I have read that they're like 3.75 inch scale, which I think you need 3.75 inch figurines to scale with these to make them accurate, humanoid figurines. But I'm not sure what like scale scale they are. I'm guessing they're like 1 to 16 scale or 1 to 18 scale, somewhere in between there, give or take a little bit. But these two are about in the same scale. This one, this one's a smaller tail, a similar sized body, maybe a touch smaller, really big head. I actually think that this one's feet, though they are really similar in size, fit so much better. They're splayed out more widely. They're a little bit more broad looking from the front, but they just don't have those long chicken toes that this version has for some reason. It's a little harder to make out on camera, but in person, these these just look weird to me. These look far more natural. Even the claws on these seem sharper and better done, and the scaling on them looks better as well. Just weird to me. For some reason, these just look better. They look more natural on a Jurassic Park T-Rex. I do really like the sculpt on the head of this Rex here. There's something about it that actually feels a little bit more accurate to the Stan Winston animatronic on this figure. I think the head is actually <laughs> a little too wide on this Rex, but at the same time, I kind of like that. Because I do remember that the Rex on the film had like a nice wide snout. Whereas the Hammond collection has a slightly less wide snout, which does look very accurate and I'm sure has been measured out very, very attentively by whoever sculpted it. But I don't know, something about the overall feel of this figure's head feels like it could still use a little bit of tweaking. I'm not 
100% sure what it is, but it's something to do with the nose and the kind of the snout and something about the position of like the detailing just behind the eyes here. And I don't really know what it is, but I do think this one does capture the personality of like a Jurassic Park Rex pretty well. Yeah, overall, this one does feel more toy-like than this one, which is good, considering that this one is meant to be the Lecter-focused figure. But from a distance, they both really feel similar in a lot of ways, so that's really interesting. Since my unboxing video, I actually got a really good deal on this extreme damaged T-Rex from Mattel. So this is one of the slightly more smaller scale figures, I'm guessing. I'm not sure which is the more standard scale of their Mattel figures. Again, I'm just fairly new to this line. I never really purchased anything from it until now. So I found out this one is a little bit smaller, but still done with a lot of nice detail work. It's got a... It's a weird gimmick where you've got this red fleshiness that you can make appear on these scars across its body. Aside from that, it is a nice, decent looking Jurassic Park T-Rex. I like the sort of darker shading on it, and the detail work is really good on it. It's not to the same standards as this thing, obviously, but it is a really decent Rex figure. It actually has that feature that I was saying would be nice with the separate jaw articulation for both parts of the head here so that's really cool i actually wonder how this one would compare to this one where it painted up the same way because the sculpt is really nice and it does look very faithful to a jurassic park t-rex one figure that i do really have to compare this one to is that bootleg horizon t-rex model kit so if i move him aside we can bring her in so for all intents and purposes this thing is a direct casting of one of the actual maquettes from Stan Winston's studio when they were making the original Jurassic Park. Now, I don't think it's as accurate as it could be because this is a bootleg. It's been warped and some of the proportions may have been changed in the process. So I don't think it's really perfect. And it's also been put together and painted by me and then it's broken and some of the paint scratched off. It's missing an arm. You know, it has its issues. But... At some point down the line, this thing was taken from a casting of an original Jurassic Park T-Rex maquette from Stan Winston Studio, which is really cool and makes this thing a really good comparison to this Rex here, especially since they are in a similar scale, which I'm, again, not really sure what it is. Maybe like 1 to 15 to 1 to 18, something like that. But the first thing that you can see about this Rex, the feet. They are tiny compared to the massive chicken feet on yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not gonna hop on that. I'm not gonna hop on that guys. I'm done. But I just wanted to bring that up one last time. They do have a lot of similarities. I really tried to get the paint on this one accurate. I really tried that sort of splotchy banana sort of technique. I didn't have an airbrush or anything, so it didn't come out quite as nice as I would have ideally liked. But I hope this gives you kind of an idea. I also do want to compare the face sculpts of these two Rexes because I'm still a little on the fence about this one here. I'm just, I'm really, really pedantic about the face sculpts of a lot of these T-Rex figures. They never quite feel exactly on par with the animatronic from the original film. There's always just something about them that doesn't quite feel right and... This one, I feel like from certain angles, maybe from like the front, feels a little bit closer to that r classic Rexy look. I don't know whether it's the more broad nose or something like that. Something about this one here, even though it is really nicely detailed and just looks really, really similar. I don't know, something is missing to me. Hard to say what though. The skin texture on this model kit even though it is very detailed, it's much, much smoother than what we see on our Mattel figure. Which is really interesting. Again, I think this is a little bit stylized. It's a bit too detailed and textured compared to what this Rex actually looked like. But I, I like that. I don't dislike the amount of detail we have on here. It's just, just something to bear in mind. Now let's bring in some third party figures because on my quest to get like the perfect Jurassic Park T-Rex in my collection, 
I've often reached for third party figures because strangely enough the licensed stuff never felt quite right to me. This is one of the more classic well-known third party figures that people often lean to when they are looking for movie accurate Jurassic Park T-Rex and that of course is the Papo Green T-Rex, the green variant. Uh, the reason we go for the green variant, despite the original T-Rex being more of a brown color, is the newer brown variants of this T-Rex that Papo put out have re-sculpted details to the face, probably for copyright issues, to not look as close to the Jurassic Park look as this thing actually did. And strangely enough, despite this actually dropping down quite low in my ranking of Jurassic Park-like T-Rex figures in my collection, this one's face sculpt, still to this day, seems like it's one of the more faithful to the original film. I don't know guys, there's just something with the eyes and the expression and like the width of the snout from like the front on angle and from just certain poses that really have that same snarl and menacing look to them that I remember from that original Jurassic Park T-Rex. Of course this one has its downsides, the coloring is of course off with the green color. The teeth are also really blunt and toy-like on this thing, which I'm not a huge fan of. And it's stuck in this sort of very outdated sort of T-Rex style pose. It's meant to sort of emulate the Rex at the end of the film with the banner coming down and it roaring triumphantly. But I would have sort of preferred it maybe in a different pose because it's a little bit too sort of curled up, I would think. And some of the details like the arms are probably too big. Regardless, this is still a great classic figure, and for any sort of Jurassic Park or Dinosaur fan, i try to get this one in your collection. Although, again, the green variant in particular is really difficult to get these days. I'd also recommend you guys, if you are interested, do check out the Atomic Vinyl Reviews Instagram page. I have the link for that in the description of the video. The reason being is I am posting a lot of images of this figure next to a bunch of other T-Rex figures and it helps give you a good sense of what they look like in person together. Maybe a little bit better than this video might show. The next figure I picked up in my collecting journey to find the best Jurassic Park Rexy figure was this Rebor Killer Queen T-Rex. At the time I thought she was amazing and super accurate but over the years I've kind of dropped her down in my ranking of these T-Rex figures for a number of reasons. Uh, one just because she is a nightmare to stand and it's not really again the issue of the feet being too small although that is a little bit of a factor <laughs> but it's because these Rebor figures, for whatever reason, they want them to be in really dynamic poses and so they have her like leaning off to the side weirdly and so I have to have this peg here to help her stand. That's a little bit of an issue. But aside from that, it's not super super accurate. The scales across the body is one thing that really stands out. They're way way too big for a figure like this. Rexy has more of like an elephant skin type texture over most of her body with little scoot type scales across her face. And though in some ways I think she has a very accurate face sculpt, in others it just seems a little bit off. I think the teeth are a little bit too triangular shaped as opposed to the more sort of banana shaped teeth that you traditionally see on a Jurassic Park Rex. And overall this figure is just beat out by the next two that I'm about to bring in. Here we have the female T-Rex by W. Dragon. And this is one of the most screen accurate third party figures of a Jurassic Park style T-Rex on the market. At least that I could find, at least for an affordable price. Now this figure wasn't cheap, nor was the next one that I'm about to bring in, which I think is equally as good as this one. I'm actually kind of on the fence about which one I prefer. This one is just beautifully done. The sculpt of the skin across her body is absolutely perfect. The feet are perfectly proportioned. Sorry, I'm not going to keep harping on about that. The, the way her arms sit looks really natural, beautifully done. This is kind of made of a hard resin-like material for those of you who are curious. And the face is really accurate looking to a Jurassic Park T-Rex, although mine is a little bit warped. Her jaw is a little bit, yeah, you can see fucked up. But ideally, her face would be pretty damn perfect. Although, I still am a little bit nitpicky. I feel like maybe her nose or snout area 
whatever you want to call it, it could be a little bit more broad. I feel like her nose holes are a little bit too close together and her snout is a little bit too pinched. But again, that could have more to do with my figure having a slightly warped head, less to do with this figure in design in general. And again, with a lot of these figures, I was talking about the belly having this armored design, which is very, very apparent on the original Jurassic Park T-Rex, very unique to that design. And as you can see that, they got it right here. Also, they actually implemented what I was talking about with the stand, with the pegs and the feet. So you can have her without a stand, which I think in this case, she actually, yeah, she actually does stand without it. Although, considering that she is made of a harder resin material, I would be really worried about her falling over, so I always have her on the stand. Which, I don't know if it's just me, but does this stand not remind you of the shape of Isla Nublar from Jurassic Park, or, or is that just me? Kind of reminds me of that, the shape of that island. Just a little bit. Regardless, really great figure. I'm still so bloody picky about these Jurassic Park T-Rexes that I still don't consider her to be absolutely perfect. And most of that might be just the face looking ever so slightly off. There's just something about the, the eyes and that snarl from the original animatronic that they used that I really want to see recreated in a figure that I just quite haven't seen yet. And here is the Nanmu. I think it's the Nanmu Alpha T-Rex or something like that. This is very similar to the last two, the Rebor and the W Dragon, except for this is made of a more softer plastic similar to the Rebor, except for this figure is just done to a level that is insane. The detailing on this is so fine and so beautifully done. I think out of all my T-Rex figures, this has the finest level of detail work. Every scale is so well realized on this. The paintwork is very smooth and beautiful. But I do still have some minor gripes about it. But I, I just have to show these two together. Because these might be the two best Jurassic Park T-Rexes in my collection. Again, that W Dragon one, if it weren't for the warped face, might beat this out. But I still think, just because of the sharpness of the details on this thing, I'd still probably enjoy this one more anyway. One thing that's really, really, really cool about this one, and the Rebo one had this too, to be fair, but it's done better on this one because the teeth are a better shape. The teeth are actually done in a translucent plastic, so they actually look like real bone. And the details are just so fine and beautiful across this entire figure. It's painted really, really closely to the original Jurassic Park T-Rex. However, from what I understand, I think this one is actually more based on the female T-Rex in the Lost World, the second Jurassic Park film. So it's not quite exact to Rexy. And there's also, I don't know, the eye on this thing kind of bugs me. It looks a little weird. This is a really nice close look at this thing and you can really see the detailing and the scales and everything on this is so great. But I don't know, something about that eye looks a little derpy to me and it just doesn't feel exactly like Rexy from the film. Again, I'm being super picky. Still, this is one of my favorite figures and really, really love this thing. I hope you enjoyed seeing this thing compared with a few of my other Rex figures. I know I'm so picky about all the little specific details, but there's just something about the original animatronic that they used in the original Jurassic Park film that for whatever reason, I don't feel like they've fully been able to recreate in any of these figures or any of the other more affordable ones I've seen on the market. The only time I've seen it really look right is by some of those really expensive statue pieces that you have by like Prime Studio or some other like actual Stan Winston prop remakes that I've seen on the market, which are again, super expensive collector pieces. But as is, this figure is incredible. It's something that we as the Jurassic Park fan community have been dying for for years. Like an actual reasonably screen accurate, like definitive figure of the original Rexy. Like the, the absolute star and mascot of the entire franchise. There's just never really been like the one figure that you'd go to to, to recommend to anybody if they were looking for something like that. And this, this is pretty much it. I have my gripes with the figure. If I had it my way, I would have the feet 
be more in proportion, even if they're just smaller, or even if you just take the feet off of the Thrash and Devour one, I think that would be at least a bit better. But something like that, you sharpen up the teeth, for example, and then this thing would be comfortable in any collection next to figures of high-end status, like ones by Monster Arts or NECA or anything like that. It would look excellent. As is, I feel like it's still sort of teetering in the grounds where it still feels like a Mattel children's toy, but just done up to be a little nicer. It still kind of has that vibe, and again, I'm blaming the feet. The teeth also have a little bit of an issue with that, I've got to admit as well. But, but the rest of the figure, very, very well done. I love the sculpt on this thing. The detail work is very impressive for a toy like this. Price point on this one, I feel like it is a bit much for what we get. At least here in Australia, I hear that they go for like 50 bucks in the US, which I think is very reasonable. We have to pay twice that in our currency here to get this one, which um, I feel is less of an issue about the figure itself and more about our economy. So <laughs> that's a little, little side note there. But regardless, uh, I think it's a great figure and I'm glad that the Jurassic Park fan base finally has a pretty much definitive T-Rex figure for our collections. So that is it for my review of the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. I'm giving it a strong recommend, especially if you're a Jurassic Park or a Rexy fan, this is a must have. So thank you guys so so much for watching this video. I know it's been a little bit long, a bit rambly, but I did have a lot to say about this one. So yeah, take care my friends and I'll see you in one of my future videos. But until then, may all your vinyl be irradiated vinyl. Over and out.